Blow it up. Blow the whole thing up. Start from scratch. We need a new all-star event if we want to keep a NASCAR all-star event. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove Post Texas All-Star Race Edition. We've got a lot to get to. I'm recording this. You can't see it, that alarm clock behind me. It says midnight. I just got back from the track. I was there for almost 12 hours. I'm exhausted, but I've got to get some things off my chest. First off, we have to thank today's sponsor, and I totally realized I forgot to pack my Guard Instant Shutter Fix, so I'll be right back. Ah, here it is. I even changed shirts. LubeGuard Instant Shutter Fix is the original instant torque converter shutter eliminator. It's easy to apply and it begins working immediately. Their condensed friction modifier formula eliminates torque converter shutter instantly and safely. It eliminates hard shifting, vibration, chatter, and it works with all conventional, synthetic, and low viscosity automatic transmission fluids. You can find LubeGuard Instant Shutter Fix at CarQuest, Napa, O'Reilly, AutoZone, Advance, Pet Boys, and online at Amazon.com. You can click the link down below to learn more about LubeGuard. If you head to Shutterman.com, also linked down in the description below, you can find out more about LubeGuard's Instant Shutter Fix. Thank you to LubeGuard for sponsoring this episode. Now let's head back to Fort Worth. That's where all my editing stuff is set up. <laughs> all right, the magic of television, of, of YouTube. Let's make one thing clear before we launch into reviewing this race. Nobody, not NASCAR, not the drivers, and certainly not the fans, especially those watching at home, want to see the NASCAR All-Star Race held at Texas Motor Speedway, especially not in its current flawed form. Ever since they repaved and more importantly reconfigured Texas Motor Speedway at the end of the 2016 season, the track is just broken. It's one groove right along the bottom all the way around. Drivers are practically flat out in three and four, no off throttle time, which makes for few passing opportunities. They desperately tried to work the outside lane in by throwing PJ1 on the track and they've permanently stained the asphalt to the point that IndyCar races have been a mess in recent years. And now they tried putting resin on it as an additional band-aid and none of it's working. Texas Motor Speedway Way is a broken racetrack, and everybody knows it. Unfortunately, NASCAR's current contracts with SMI, I imagine even with the city of Dallas and Fort Worth, the whole metro area, require that Texas Motor Speedway hosts two NASCAR Cup Series weekends a year. SMI also has the rights to host the All-Star Race every year. They did with Charlotte for a long time, Bristol that one year, and now Texas. All these contracts, which I'll admit I don't know the details of, I don't know when they expire, I don't know if any of that's even public information, but all of these existing contracts may spell doom for the future of the NASCAR All-Star Race. I just want to make all that clear. The only people who are looking forward to this race are local race fans, fans here in the Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas area. I will say that as much as I'm about to complain about this race, this was the best crowd I've seen at Texas Motor Speedway in at least two or three years. There were 40 or 50,000 fans in the grandstand. So the Dallas, Fort Worth market absolutely can sustain a NASCAR Cup Series race. This track just isn't it. Let me just talk about the racing for a second. Tonight looked like every other Texas Motor Speedway race since 2017. Could not pass the leader in clean air, really couldn't even get that close to the leader in clean air because again, it's a one groove track. Everyone's fighting for the same real estate. If you get close to someone, you get aero tight and you can't pass them. The only twists in this race came when Kyle Larson, who was running, I think, second at the time, blew a tire and smacked the outside wall. And then shortly thereafter, Kyle Busch, who was leading the race, had a flat tire and got run over, run through, literally run over like monster truck style by Ross Chastain. Took Chase Elliott out in the process as well. One of the freakiest crashes I've seen in recent memory. Without those two moments, this would have been a completely forgettable race despite NASCAR's best efforts. I will give NASCAR some credit. They're at least self-aware enough to know that the racing at Texas Motor Speedway isn't that good. So they pre-plan a ton of cautions and a ton of restarts to try and keep things close and somewhat interesting. NASCAR knows the racing at Texas Motor Speedway isn't that great. Now, that almost came back to bite them at the very end when race control got way too trigger happy and threw a yellow as Ryan Blaney, who had checked out at that point, was feet away from taking the checkered flag. And I guess this is where the self-awareness stops. 
all night long, fans were ripping this event on social media. Not just fans, Dale Earnhardt Jr. had few nice things to say about this race. All night long, that was the vibe on social media. In the stands, people are having a good time, but you know, if you're at a racetrack, you're having a good time. That just goes without saying, most more times than not. But Ryan Blaney had checked out. He had earned the right to collect the checkered flag, but NASCAR, with their alternative all-star race rules that nobody can keep track of on a week-to-week -week or year-to-year -year basis, said no. We're going to throw a caution for a guy in 20th place scraping the outside wall with literally one second to go in the race. Blaney took the checkered flag, took his window net down. The crew was dancing around on pit road, pit road celebrating. The race was over and NASCAR said, no, we don't think you've gotten enough of this horror show. We want you to sit through yet another dicey Texas Motor Speedway restart for no reason at all other than we want to be entertaining and we know Texas Motor Speedway isn't very entertaining and hey Ryan Blaney was about to win this race by three seconds that's not all-star race that's not flashy let's throw a little overtime restart in there to spice things up NASCAR is clueless they're just clueless. They cannot decide what they want to be. They're not the WWE. As much as they may pretend that they are, as much as they may talk about how entertaining they want to be, as Marcus Smith, basically the owner of Texas Motor Speedway, did months ago, NASCAR is not scripted in any way, shape, or form. Take yourself seriously. Every time I think they're going to take themselves seriously, they're going to promote great racing, hard racing, talk about how competitive, how athletic their drivers are, they pull something like this, which I'll give them credit. After the race, NASCAR executives said, hey, we shouldn't have thrown that caution. Race control got trigger happy and, and called it. We should, they, we should not have called it. It was a bad call. As far as Ryan Blaney's window net debacle, they said, hey, from their perspective, it was tight. It was back up. At least NASCAR's top executives owned up that it was a mistake made by officials on the ground. That's a start. But my goodness, did that piss me off. This race was won by Ryan Blaney before the final overtime. Thank goodness he won this race. NASCAR just... Every time I think they're showing self-awareness, like they realize, hey, racing at Texas Motor Speedway is not great, but we have to race here because we're contractually obligated to. We're just going to throw a bunch of cautions here to make it more interesting. Fine. But then they just can't get out of their own way and feel the need to throw that late race entertainment caution. That's what that was. That's not mince words. It's just frustrating all around. You know, again, hosting the all-star race at Texas Motor Speedway, I, I understand that they can't really do much about it right now, at least not this year. But absolutely, NASCAR and SMI, everyone should be looking forward and trying trying to get away from Texas Motor Speedway as soon as they possibly can. Build another track in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Make this be the street race venue. Chicago doesn't work out. Race in Dallas. This market deserves a race, but Texas Motor Speedway, unfortunately, is not the track to host it. Everyone's given their opinion about how you fix the all-star race. To me, you do what you did for the clash. The clash this year was an all-star race. Tonight's race at Texas Motor Speedway was a speed bump. I think you bring that stadium concept to major cities around the country. Race in New York, race in LA again, race in Miami, Chicago, Dallas even, race in Cowboy Stadium. I'll bet it's possible. Maybe it's not. Obviously, you got to look into the logistics. But if they prove, they prove that concept at the Coliseum in LA, you can bring that elsewhere. Or bring it to Bowman Gray, or if North Wilkesboro gets renovated to NASCAR's liking. Run some all-star events there. Have it be your Field of Dreams equivalent. That's what you have to do with the all-star race at this point. You bring it back to Charlotte, it'll be stale within a year. Bristol turned out to be lackluster. Martinsville is kind of a question mark right now. I don't think you can bring it to an existing short track. You got to make it unique. The clash was this year's all-star race in my book. This race was forgettable. In fact, I hope we forget about this race quickly. Before we can forget about it, though, I guess we have to talk about it. Let's look at the top finishers here. Ryan Blaney got the win, but I I'm sorry, Blaney fans. I just... I'm distracted right now. He deserves all the credit in the world. Again, he earned the win before that final restart. Penske played this evening perfectly with Cindric winning, I think, stage one. Blaney winning stage two or stage three, or I guess stage one was won by Kyle Busch. Then stage two was won by Cindric. Logano had the fastest pit stop, and then Blaney won stage three. Anyway, sorry, Penske played it perfectly. So because of the format, they had the top three starting positions for the final stage, and clean air was king. Blaney held on. I thought him staying out with you know 20, 25 laps to go whenever that Eric Jones caution came out, that was a risky play considering the tire issues we saw Larson and Kyle Busch run into earlier, but they made it work. Maybe the temperatures cooled off a little bit into the evening. Maybe they'd already made some adjustments to their tire pressures. Who knows? Maybe they knew that wasn't going to be an issue, but that part was risky, a little gutsy. It panned out for him. Congrats to Ryan Blaney. He's been right up there with Chase Elliott battling for the regular season points lead all year, but he hasn't won a points race yet this season. Winning the All-Star race is probably 
a big shot in the arm for that whole team. Hamlin finishes second. He came on strong late. I was watching him and Daniel Suarez early in the race. They both started fairly towards the back and they were working their way forward, actually able to pass pretty well mid-pack, but it took really until the very end for Hamlin to really make his presence felt. Still a good race for Denny Hamlin. I know he was really frustrated that NASCAR did not penalize Blaney for the window net violation. Like Hamlin, to his credit, admitted that, yeah, Blaney should have won the race. The caution was silly. But once the caution came out and Blaney's window net situation was sketchy, Hamlin says NASCAR should have penalized him for that. It's a black and white call. And he's right. He's got a point. Again, I told you NASCAR's perspective. From their perspective, it appeared as though the window was latched. They could see Blaney weaving back and forth on the back straightaway, which meant both of his hands were on the wheel. So from their perspective, they could not justify making that big call late in the race to force him down pit road for a silly reason. So I understand Hamlin's frustration, but I think he has to accept what's going on in the moment. You can be frustrated all you want that NASCAR is not consistent, that they sort of make up rules and calls as you go along. Like that Stenhouse caution at the very end isn't a caution 80, 90% of the time, but it was in this case. You can be frustrated in the moment, but you got to see the bigger picture. And I think Hamlin does. Anyway, he finished second. Good for him. Sindrick, rookie, finished third. Really solid night for a guy who hasn't really done much since the first couple races of the season. And Joey Logano, fourth. Again, it was a track position race. And when those three had the top three spots for the final stage, you knew they were likely going to stay in the top five at the very least. Daniel Suarez, want to give him a shout out. I mentioned him a second ago. He was moving through the field really from the drop of the green flag. He had to race his way in by winning the final open stage. And I thought for a while he might have something for the leaders at the end of this thing, but track position was king. And you know, I don't think his track house Chevy was quite as good as some of those Penske guys there towards the end. So still a top five is a really solid race for Suarez who needed some good momentum. Couple RFK cars finished in the top 10. Christopher Bell came back to finish inside the top 10 despite spinning out and getting into the outside wall. I was surprised that car wasn't more damaged. Also want to give AJ Allmendinger a shout out. Top 10 for him running a part-time cup schedule this year. That's pretty cool. Bowman there in sixth was fairly quiet, but that's a solid result for him. Not much else to say. Those are your top finishers. Again, I'm, I'm very distracted right now. It's hard for me to really think about the results and who won and who lost. It's just, there's too much else on my mind. Going back to the event as a whole for just a moment. I was there in person. I brought a friend of mine who's never been to a NASCAR race before, and you'll see it in my video later this week. I didn't script any of that. I didn't tell him what to say. He enjoyed himself. He was impressed by the amount of things there were to do around the facility all day long, outside the track, inside the track. The Blake Shelton concert was, I thought, pretty cool. He took up a huge space there in the Xfinity garage. There were thousands of fans packed in there to hear him perform between the two races. Like I said, the crowd was the best I've seen at Texas since at least 2019, maybe even 2018. And my friend, again, who knows nothing about racing, was intrigued by the, the race he saw. The, the tire failures were interesting. They shook things up. There was enough passing throughout the field that the lack of passing up front didn't really seem to bother him. Again, this is coming from a pure casual fan's perspective, but it's worth mentioning that fans who were there, who saw this race, who maybe only go to one race a year, two races a year, for the most part, they seem to enjoy themselves tonight. Even though some of the late race calls were frustrating and irritating, they had fun. And I do think that means something. All I saw on social media all night long were people complaining, whining, moaning, saying the same three or four things all night long. And that's completely justified. Watching this race from your, from your couch, I can't imagine was very interesting or very engaging. And I'm sure it triggered memories of past all-star races from decades ago that were way more interesting, way more engaging than what we see here tonight. But I just want to make that clear that the event in person, I will give Texas Motor Speedway some credit it was solid. It was better than what we saw last year, like, you know, with Sammy Hagar saying, I can't drive 55 during the pace laps to, you know, nobody in the stands. <laughs> I'll at least say that being there in person was, was fun. Going to a race pretty much any time of the year, anywhere is fun. Today was no different. So I do want to give NASCAR and SMI and Texas credit for that. But we can bring all these fun things like Blake Shelton, like guys shooting themselves out of cannons, like fireworks. We can bring those to the Coliseum. We can bring those to other stadiums around the country. We can bring those to big markets. And if we really wanna try and chase the new fan with a flashy all-star event, which is what the all-star race should be, I think that's what you gotta do. No disrespect to the hardcore fans, but I, I, I know I mentioned North Wilkesboro or like a Bowman Gray, and I think that might be fun to do every few years. But I think the stadium concept it should be in play more frequently. I think the stadium concept is what's going to drive the sport forward. And that's what should be first utilized for future all-star events. The all-star race is supposed to be flashy. And what we got here tonight really wasn't. So let's put this thing on the groovy gauge. I don't know what to square this thing. Look, I'll be real. The race wasn't as bad as a lot of people say it was. It really wasn't. 
Couldn't pass the leader out front outside of restarts, but NASCAR manufactured plenty of restarts to keep that battle engaging. The tire failures, yeah, they're frustrating, but you know, it was Bush and Larson who had tire failures, and early in the race, they were two of the only drivers who did not pit in between stage one and stage two. So they were pushing the envelope. If anyone was gonna blow a tire, you would expect it to be the guys that were staying out longer than anyone else and running up near the front, putting a lot of pressure, and I don't know what to make of it. I'm gonna give this race a 45%. I, I can't go any lower than that because I'll be honest, it was not the worst Texas race I've seen. I have seen worse Texas races. I've probably seen several worse Texas races in person. I'm just being honest. A lot of surrounding things were frustrating about this event, but the racing itself, mediocre, 45%. That's my score. I know this is a downer episode. I've had a long, long day. That's part of it, but it's just, the all-star race can be so much more. And it, it's, this just feels like such a missed opportunity year after year. This is the second year in a row it's been at Texas. The year it was at Bristol was lackluster, very disappointing. Charlotte with that high downforce package wasn't great. It was fine, but I just feel like the all-star race, it's a chance to really get creative and really break new barriers, break into new markets, make new fans or, or garner new interest. And I just feel like every year it's at Texas, it's failing to do all that. It, it just feels, like I said, like a speed bump. You know, we just had a decent race at Kansas. We're going into, I don't even know what race is next weekend. Uh, Charlotte, 600. Goodness gracious, crown jewel. Yeah, I feel like those races, you know, it's going to be a good flow. You got this speed bump here in the middle getting in the way. That's what, that's what this race feels like. It's the speed bump race. Anyway, share your thoughts down in the comment section below. I know I'm not usually this negative. It's just, ah, it's just frustrating because I remember what Texas Motor Speedway used to be. I remember what the all-star race used to be. And I think about what both could be today. Dallas-Fort Worth deserves a great racetrack, deserves a great race. NASCAR should make its all-star race a true all-star event. And tonight just didn't deliver really on either. So it's just frustrating. You want to do more. You want to see better results. I just don't know how you get there. It's not easy. Congrats again to Ryan Blaney. We'll be back this week with plenty of regular Out of the Groove episodes. I did vlog at the track today, so you'll see that later this week as well. Again, I took my friend, who I've known for years, but never really talked racing with, to his first NASCAR race. I think that's going to be a really interesting perspective for fans to watch at home. That's going to do it. Real quick, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. I truly appreciate your support every single month. I couldn't do the show without it. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It's free, and it really helps me out a ton. I really appreciate all your support. I will see you again very, very soon. Got a long drive home. I'm gonna get like three hours of sleep. Love it, live it, I'm happy. I feel like this race took a year off my life. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. I had fun. I did have fun despite the frustrations, despite the gritting your teeth moments. I had fun. I will say that. I should end on a happy note. I did have a good time. I will see you all in the next video. I think a good night's sleep will be good for my soul. <laughs> have a good one, y'all. Thanks for watching.